Go ahead. Okay. Today we are going to discuss industrial 3D x-ray imaging or computed tomography. And on the agenda is, what is computed tomography? What are the basic components of a CT system and how do they work? What is magnification and why is it important? Attenuation. What are voxels? Reconstruction and segmentation. Challenges and applications. The answers will be provided. Start things off. What is computed tomography? A CT scan, also called X-ray computed tomography, and computerized axial tomography scans, or CAT scans, make use of computer process combinations of many X-ray images taken from different angles to produce cross-sectional or tomographic images or virtual slices of specific areas of the scanned object, allowing the user to see inside the object without cutting. On the left, you can see a single X-ray image of a AA battery. Performing a fold CT scan entails combining many X-ray images of that same object from different angles. Once you have done that, then the images can be assembled into a 3D data set, as you can see on the right. Showing this in action, the object to be scanned has many X-ray images taken throughout a 360 degree rotation. The images can then be reconstructed into the 3D data set. And what are the basic components of a CT system? First, you will need a source that can generate X-rays. This can either be a radioactive source or more commonly an X-ray tube, which functions much more similarly to a light bulb. Then the object to be scanned is mounted in front of the X-ray source and a detector plate is mounted opposite of the source. Taking an X-ray image uses the same principles as photography in the visible light spectrum. The image is focused on the detector plate. It is generated by X-ray photons that pass around and through the object. On to attenuation. As the photons are passing around and through the object being scanned, some will pass cleanly through to the detector plate, while others will be absorbed or more specifically attenuated by atoms within the scanned object. The reason we can't just use the word absorb to describe this effect is because the photon may also deflect off the target atom or scatter. It would be ideal if absorption was the only mode of attenuation, but there is actually much more going on that has to be taken into account. Oops, I'm sorry. This chart shows a general attenuation curve versus the energy of an individual photon interacting with a material being scanned. And just to keep things in perspective, your typical metal scan is going, or yes, medical scan is going to be less than 10 to the four electron volts or about 100 kilovolts. Your typical industrial scan is going to range between 10 to the four and 10 to the five, but they can get in excess of 10 to the seven or 10 mega electron volts, though those are very high powerful scanners. And you can see that as you apply more power to the X-ray tube and therefore the individual X-ray photon, the less chance it has of being attenuated. So more power will produce more material penetration. Every element, excuse me, every element will attenuate differently which is why you can clearly see the difference between bone and a met metal implant in a medical scan. As such, each element can be described by its own attenuation chart. And on to reconstruction. The reconstruction process is taking multiple images of the object at multiple angles or projections around the object. You can see what any given projection looks like in the example below. For any given angle, the projection is a line of brighter and darker pixels, depending on how much attenuation or loss of intensity blocks that part of the X-ray beam. And you can see there in the pictures on the bottom, one projection will get you a simple X-ray image, two will give you the different angle on that image, and as you build up more and more and more images, you start to develop a clear 3D data set of whatever you are scanning and voxels. Once the complete projection of the part that are captured through a 360 degree rotation, the images are segmented into grayscale value pixels. 
because the same theoretical point was captured from multiple angles throughout the rotation, they can be resolved as 3D volumetric pixels or voxels. The 3D data set consists of voxels. This is your second buzzword for the day after attenuation. And a voxel is nothing more than a 3D pixel. Just keep that in mind. On to segmentation. Because each set of components in this assembly are made of different materials, they attenuate differently and therefore produce distinct sets of voxels. Once the voxels are determined, filtering processes are used to reduce noise and artifacts that occur from different materials and angles of the sample seen by the detector. The data is then used to create a skin by applying borders determined by differences in the grayscale value. With the borders defined, the different objects can be separated into individual 3D data sets. And magnification. Magnification is the process of moving the object closer or further away from the X-ray source and detector, creating a larger than life shadow, which will give you a higher resolution, allowing us to see smaller defects in greater detail. Having the object closer to the detector provides a smaller shadow, decreasing the resolution of the final images. Moving the object closer to the X-ray source provides a larger shadow, optimizing resolution of the final images. And when you increase the voxels per mustache, Mario also looks better. On to scatter. This falls under the category of the challenges that we face in CT scanning. As we discussed earlier, scatter is an unavoidable part of attenuation. It is more prevalent when scanning heavier elements that have a loose grip in their balance electrons. The image on the left is an x-ray image of a simple copper wire. You can see the false positives caused by the scattered photons as they follow the profile of the wire. On the right, you can see multiple instances of scatter building up upon each other. Fortunately, there are methods for minimizing scatter. There are a variety of measures that you can take to reduce the scatter and its effects. Here we have two x-ray images of the same steel bolt. On the left, you can see a cloud of false positives resulting from scatter. But since we are zoomed very into the part, we still have a relatively clear view of the boundary line between the metal and the false positives. On the right, we can see that choosing an appropriate power level will further reduce scatter in the first place. In this case, power was increased to reduce the percentage of coherent scatter of the total attenuation. And on to beam hardening, the second issue that we run into often in CT scanning. When scanning multiple materials with significantly different attenuative characteristics, i.e. steel and plastic, as you see in this part, the more attenuative material tends to block the low energy photons needed to create clean data for a less attenuative material. In the image on the right, you can see how the metal plug is surrounded by false negatives in an area of less attenuative material, as the metal has too aggressively attenuated the lower energy photons needed to maintain high fidelity in the plastic. The same problem occurs when objects have a high aspect ratio. The metal plug attenuates even more aggressively when the photons must penetrate through an inch of material lengthwise versus the 1 16th of an inch in the other direction. Anatomically dense materials such as gold, lead, and tungsten prevent the absorption of material in the emitted x-rays, resulting in scatter, which we discussed before, which translates into noisy data or sometimes no data at all. Fortunately, we have methods for minimizing beam hardening. Here we have three scans of the same Allen wrench made of steel. The 3D voxel slices show evidence of beam hardening when false negatives arise in the plug. The first step that you should take to reducing beam hardening in anything is to choose an appropriate power level that can sufficiently penetrate the part. On the far left, you can see that we do have data throughout the entire Allen wrench. Though, if you pay close attention, this dark area is a result of beam hardening. The wrench is the same material and should be displaying an even color throughout, though you can see that's not the case. When the part rotates around its 360 degrees for the scan and points the thickest cross section into the photon path, that is enough to cause an uneven attenuation. 
So the thin portion versus the thick portion will cause beam hardening. Fortunately, slightly rotating the part solves this problem completely. In the second picture, you can see that the part was reoriented to minimize large deviations in the material thickness. However, we still have false negatives showing up in the center of the part. The solution to this is to place a filter in front of the x-ray source that attenuates lower powered photons before they can create false, neg sorry, create false negatives. And you can see that on the far right. There is a much more even color throughout the Allen wrench. That is because the filtering restricts the x-ray spectrum to an appropriate range for this part. So you know how to CT scan, what applications can you use for? You can perform void analysis, you can perform fiber analysis, you can check the internals and volume calculations, you can perform micro tomography, so on and so forth. Void analysis, exploring the complete volume of the object allows you to see defects in the object that would traditionally go unnoticed. In this case, a simple container of lip balm, you can see a large void in the material caused by the filling method during manufacturing. This is a valuable tool for future quality control. The volume of voids, in this case porosity, can be calculated to determine risk of mechanical failure when the part is put into service. Many manufacturers have strict rules applied to porosity regarding quantity and size and location. Now in fiber analysis, composite materials such as carbon fiber or fiberglass can be evaluated at the micro level. In this case, fiber strands are color coded by their orientation. The red and blue colored strands are running perpendicular to each other. Virtual physics can be applied to determine their structural integrity under specific loads. Examining components inside a container allow you to see their position that is not otherwise viewable without destroying it. In this example, a simple pill showing a complex assembly of micro tablets. These can be separated to calculate their volume and provide a total count of the tablets. Micro tomography. How small can we scan? Well, actually fairly small. In this case, we scanned a grain of salt that was just pulled from the kitchen, and I can tell you that it has 5% porosity. So if you want to ask for a refund, you might get something out of that. On to dimensional analysis. Once the data is acquired and the surface is created using reconstruction details of the part, it can be validated, excuse me, can be validated using dimensional analysis. And in this case specifically, you could also go in and count each grain of gunpowder if you so choose. I did not choose to do that though. To complex circuitry, CT can be utilized to examine the inner workings of assemblies containing complex circuit boards and product content position. Manufacturers can audit their products to determine if embedded objects are getting distributed or placed properly. In this example, you can see that the distribution of almonds in the candy bar to ensure that the customer is satisfied with every bite. And that is it. Does anyone have any questions? Thanks for your presentation, Sean. Not a problem. Do there's one other person on. If, if they don't have any questions, then I think that's all for today. All right, I suspect you are correct. <laughs> I appreciate you uh, sharing with us uh, about CT scanning. Oh, not a problem. You take care then. Thanks, bye. Bye.